Down the long path of history, tramping across centuries and continents and the graves of kings and the necks of dictators, seeking always a way of life where the people have their freedom, believing, praying, fighting, dying, we came this way. <laughs> NBC University of the Air, a public service of the National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated stations, presents the second chapter in a new series, We Came This Way, a dramatic account of man's struggle down through the ages for a democratic way of life. For listeners at home and overseas, we present chapter two, a story of Alexander Bedusi on We Came This Way. Thing. I strike the harp and a tail comes forth. I strike the harp and a tail is born. I strike the harp and the air is fragrant with meadow and forest and the river Danube. Sweet with the song of my Hungarian land. What tale shall I sing to you, brothers? What tale but a tale of freedom? What tale but a hero's epic? Draw close. Listen to the tale of young Alexander. Alexander Petrusi, Hungarian singer, bugler of freedom. I, my lips shall sing of him. My heart shall pray. I strike the harp for Alexander Petrusi. I strike the harp, and the tale begins. In the dead century behind us, my Hungary was a prisoner of an Austrian king. Ferdinand, a child's brain, frightened by empire. But at his right hand, like gaunt death, stood Prince Metternich, the plotter. And on his left, General Anyao, the killer. Hungary groaned under the Austrian oppression. On the plains, the herdsmen sang bitter songs. I, my soul is a wounded bird. My spirit is a heavy storm, they sang. In the huts of the peasants, the smoke of their fires was thin as their joys. None was free but the wind and the river. None was free but the well-born lords. I, Hungary was bowed like a prisoner in chains. To the city of Buda in this time of oppression came young Alexander. To the city of riches the wanderer came asking, where is the house of Michael Boschmerzer? For Schmerzia, the poet, where is his home? For Schmerzia, the poet, uh, he's south of the park. Well, who doesn't know Michael Schmerzia, lad? That's his house there, above the cafe. Who's there? Is your master in? My master? Yes, Michael Vosmerti. Is he home? And who's calling upon him? Alexander Petrefi. Petrefi? I'm afraid I don't know a Petrefi. Will you take me to your master? But, my dear boy, I am the master. I am Michael Vosmerti. You... Then forgive me. I, I didn't know. Come in. Come in. If I had no master, I... Yes, 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 I know. Inside here. There's a fire going. Now, what is it? I've come from Debrecen to see you. I'm Alexander Petrefi. From Debrecen? The coach rides like a journey in a police van, isn't it? I didn't come by coach. I walked. Are you serious, lad? It's over 200 miles. I said I walked. 
You really walked over 200 miles to see me? What for in God's name? To show you my poems. By the fireside, Alexander Paderfi read them. To Michael Vershmertia, he read his poems. And the logs died down to a glowing. And the air grew still as sleep. And Vershmertia listened to the song. That is the last one, Vershmertia. How old are you, Alexander? Twenty. Twenty. A boy, yes. How will you take fame? Fame? Yes. These poems will bring it to you. They're beautiful. Ah, beautiful is such a weak word. Uh, how shall I say it, lad? Hunger, it lives and breathes in them. But I don't understand. How will I take fame? Now listen to me, Alexander. For I'm a veteran of the literary wars in Hungary. When a young poet becomes famous overnight, as you will, the rich and the nobility size him up. They applaud him. They give him expensive dinners and inexpensive flattery. They woo him, Alexander, and if there's a hint of protest in his poems, why, they admire the spirit and the courage, but nonetheless say, boy, let the bitterness in your poems be the bitterness of disappointed love. Let your anger be an anger at the shortness of life, therefore at the shortness of pleasure. Art, they will tell you, should be of spiritual things. Reality, they will tell you, will make a scrub woman, a woman of the streets out of art. Write charmingly, boy, they'll say. Write pleasantly. Offend no one, and you will go far. They'll say this to me. Aye, they will. Alexander, I hear the people singing in your poems. I hear our whole Hungarian land, the low country, the Carpathians. I hear a whole nation oppressed. Will you forget that oppression? Is that what you are afraid of, Schmidt? You are young yet, Alexander. Listen to me. In Debre Sen, I lived in a garret. And from my window, I could see the town square. There was a gallows on that square. An Austrian gallows. And when I looked upon it, I saw the fable of my nation. Hungary swinging from the gibbet. I swore I would give my poems to my people as one gives an axe to their hands. That is why I've come to Budapest. That is why I've come to you. I need a publisher for my song. Like the cannon burst, like the lightning's explosive flash, young Alexander's poem struck the land. Freedom's bugler, the people's singer. Like Isaiah's trumpet, his sweet peal echoed across the Hungarian land. So they suffer. Millions, slaves, they suffer. And they bear the harsh, the brutal chain. Has heaven no dream or hope to offer? Shall they pray and plead and all in vain? No. My song shall wake. All nations shout and wonder. I shall sing of liberty and light in streams of living thunder. And among the people went young Alexander. His words were banners in the wind. Devotion gave eloquence. Vision gave fire. Amongst the people went their singer, crying, Hungary must be independent. The Austrians keep our nation tied in the chains of feudalism. Our peasants are serfs, slaves. They cannot own land. Taxes lay them down like Carpathian mountains. I say we have been cursed with feudal titles and privileges long enough. Strip the nobility of this power, and a new republic in Hungary will arise. Into the gilded salons with Alexander. Into the perfumed rooms came peasants and herdsmen. Hunger and suffering. I... For a frightening moment, ragged and wild-eyed, Hungary stood in the glittering rooms. Uh, will you let be for a while, Petrefe? I cannot. Uh, please, uh, uh, please try to enjoy yourself. Over what? Talk of a play from Viennese dancing master wrote? A drama of teacups and chatter? Why, I found it charming, Alexander. My apologies to you, madam. 
but it was stupid and criminal. Uh, please, Patessi, uh, uh, don't turn my drawing room into a parliament. Well, I will not stand for it being a nursery for children. You talk, talk, and it's like listening to the sounds in a seashell, unreal and far away. Look outside your window, man. There's an Austrian cavalry in the streets. And a handsome lot they are, too. Handsome. What must be done to make you understand? A whole nation rise. A powerful movement exists against the Austrian oppressor. And you, madam, consider the oppressor handsome. I said I'll have no agitation here, Patessi. It is here, my dear Count. And it will always be here. For truth is like death. You may shut the windows and the doors. Your servants may guard the gates. You may even lock yourself up in this very room. But in spite of all, it will pop in. Yes, my dear Count, in spite of all. Beside the leaders stood young Alexander. Beside Louis Kossuth, Bartolomeo Semer, beating the drums of freedom for Hungary. And his purpose was steady as a hawk's flight, unwavering as a ship's prow. Certain was he, unchanging. His poems were axes against the Austrian gibbet. Now strike the heart for the young girl. Now strike the heart for Julia Sendre. In the glittering rooms he met her, and love was an ambush, a sally. And young Alexander was seized. And his young body cried like a voice in the wilderness. In the night when the city is sleeping, a wanderer moves through the streets. In the death-like silence, there echoes the lonely sound of his feet. Over cobble and pavement he wanders, like a demon returned for the sight of the beloved, who's dreaming in a trance, an unreal night. Julia. Yes, Alexander? Help me, Julia. With what, Alexander? I sit at a table with paper and pen, Julia. And the words come. They come like children laughing and racing into the sunlight from a dark hut. But when I'm here with you, I'm dumb. My tongue freezes on the words I want to say. Alexander. Yes, Julia? Alexander, please. Please try to say them. Please. In the night when the city is... No. Not in a poem. Say it to me simply. Like anyone else. I want to hear the word simply. I cannot. It's not poetry I want now, Alexander. Can't you see that? Not something you made out of skill and talent. I want it simply. The way other people would say it. Julia, I... Try, Alexander. Try. Will you be my wife, Julia? Oh. Will you be my wife? <laughs> I shall dance, I tell you. Dance right here in the street, Bushmetia. <laughs> and when will it be? In a week, Bushmetia. In just one week, and I shall have a bride. You'll have apoplexy if you don't calm down, lad. Uh, where will you go? To Kuzo Castle on the Danube. I saw it once. It rises like Asgard, the home of the hero. Yes, I know it. A romantic place. And uh, when will you be back? I don't know. Who can think of Budapest now? She'll be with me, Bushmetia. Julia will be with me. Well, you won't forget Hungary, will you? Because you told me yesterday that the crisis is rapidly drawing to a head. We'll need your poems, Alexander, to help on the fever. What are you talking about, Boy Snatcher? Of course I'll write poems. Of course. To Kulto Castle, Alexander took his bride. And the Danube flowed its vastness at their feet. The flight of eagles wreathed their castle walls. The wind trumpeted to the hosts of heaven. Stars glittered like warriors' eyes. To Kulto, Alexander took his bride. And no nation's agony could reach them there. And Alexander wrote. O oh, holy night, I wander with my love through garden and through grove. In love's delight, sharp and clear, bells are heard from far. On heaven's blue floor, is shining many a star. Wherever you are, let me be near you too. If you were the heaven, beloved, I'd be a star in that heaven too. And if you were doomed to hell, my beloved, I'd seek perdition to be near to you. Day 
became weak. Weak became months. And only love was found. Peasant and herdsman groaned in the distant valleys below. In the heights, love grew fast. In the heights, shimmered the unreal world. And from the city of Buda came Michael Borschmerzian. And in the great hall of Kulso Castle, they welcomed him. Julia Fensley, the beauty. The dirty, the singer. And Michael Borschmerzian read the poems. Well, how do you like them? Is this what you've been writing all this time? What do you mean? I mean these poems. These charming and clever verses. Well, they're more than that. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. Don't turn away, Bushmatcher. If you have more to say, say it. Tell me, Alexander. Do you know what's been happening in Hungary during these last few months? News is scarce here. How could I know that? Weren't you interested in finding out? I had many things to do. Didn't you know that all Hungary is seething while you lived in these romantic towers of Koto? That Louis Kossuth and the liberals have prepared a program for an independent Hungary? That Austria has increased its troops in the country? What's happened to you, Alexander? Nothing's happened. People ask me in Budapest, where is our singer of freedom? Where is the people's voice, Alexander Podorsi? What shall I tell them when I return? Tell them nothing and let them mind their own business. Haven't I the right to live like others who are in love? Have I said stop loving? Apparently they do. Now listen to me, lad. Listen to me because I love you. I know there are great poems in you, but they will die and wither if you cut the roots that feed them. The roots are the people and the struggle for liberty. You will dry up, lad. You will end as nothing but a small voice in a forgotten room. Don't you understand, Alexander? Poetry must be fed by life, by action, by participation. And you are in a tower, Alexander, a soaring, romantic tower. Come down, lad. Come down. When do you leave for Budapest, Bushmetim? I'm sorry if I've been unpleasant, Alexander. I had hoped it would be different. I'll leave immediately. No. Wait until tomorrow, Bushmetim. Then we will all go home. And back to the city of Buda came young Alexander. And again he beat the drums for freedom. <laughs> For 40 years, Prince Metternich of Austria has held Europe in the grip of reaction. The ground now shakes under him, for one can feel the approaching revolution like an animal senses a coming earthquake. Shake the ground still more, my brothers. Shake the world for your liberty. And it was 1848, the year of fire. In Vienna, the people shook their fists at the palace of Emperor Ferdinand. Under empire and king, the ground shook until it could shake no more. Boschmetje! Boschmetje! Well, Alexander, what is it? The news, Boschmetje, the news. A revolution in Vienna. A revolution against Metternich. Are you sure? Yes, yes, the people have risen. Metternich's fallen. It's the moment, Boschmetje. Austria's wounded. It's the moment. Wait, where are you rushing off to? To the streets. The people will be pouring into the streets of Budapest. Come, come quickly. Will quickly. you calm down for a moment, Alexander? No, not even for a moment. I'm going, Bushmetcher, into the streets, into the squares. For now, now our revolution begins. <laughs> into the streets went young Alexander, the people's singer, into the public square, and the people cheered, crying, Give us our banner, Alexander, a song, Alexander. And in the public squares, he gave them their song. <laughs> Brothers, till now we were but slaves. Our fathers resting in their graves sleep not in freedom soil. Arise against the slavery in which they died. For by the Magyar God above, we truly swear, we truly swear the tyrant yoke no more to bear. The sword is brighter than the chain. Men cannot know their treasures gain. Shake off the fetters and be free. Unsheath your sword for liberty. For by the Magyar God above, we truly swear, we truly swear, the tyrant joke no more to bear. Now strike the harp for victory. Now strike the harp for the people's joy. Hungary, free. 
hungry, independent. In the spring, they rose against the oppressor. In the spring, they rose. And in the summer, my Hungarian land was free. I, Emperor Ferdinand of Austria, do hereby grant of my own free will and in good faith to the Hungarian people their independence, and do now order the immediate evacuation of all Austrian troops cavalry, and officials from their nation. In friendship do we part on this day of our Lord, August 10th, 1848. Signed, Ferdinand. In the city of Buda, the church bells rang. Done was the feudal world. Done was the slavery, the taxes burdening the poor like Carpathian mountains. All were free like the wind and the river. I, all were free. But the wind stopped. And the rivers wind up lost in the sea. you told me, Alexander. It's not a rumor. An Austrian army marching on Budapest? Aye. They've changed their mind about independence. The panic is over. The mobs have gone home. It's safe to gather an army now. Well, what will we do, Vashmetya? Call the Andreds, the people's army together. When? Tomorrow. And where will they gather? In the lowlands. Alexander, I think you and Julia better leave Budapest. It may not be safe. Leave? Go to Debrecen. I have a house there, just outside the city. Is it just outside the world, Vashmetya? Eh? Hey? No, not at Ibrisen, nor anywhere else will I go, Vashmetya. But only to the lowlands, where the hundreds gather. There go I. It is almost dawn, Julia. I know, Alexander. And my unit marches in a little while. Hold me, Alexander. Hold me close. Do you remember how the dawns came up in Kulto Castle, Julia? With eagles screaming as if they were harnessed to the sun? I wish we were in Kulto Castle now. Do you? Then we would have to be living in a different world, Julia. We'd have to be two different people in a different time. Still, I wish we were. But would it be the same Kulto Castle for us? Yes, yes. No. No, don't you see, Julia? History has come out from behind the palace doors. It is in the streets now. It is in the bivouacs and the marching feet. It has, whether we like it or not, picked us up. And is flinging us headlong toward the future. It is like a huge, a mammoth wave that tosses both ship and men upon a strange beach. A new world. And we turn, and there, all about us, debris fills the sea. Look, Julia. Look closely, and you'll see Kulto Castle is amongst the wreckage. This is a different time, beloved. A different time. Why? Why must this happen? Why must armies rush into our lives? Because Europe is in the throes of a new and violent birth. In agony and pain shall it come forth. And it shall be known as democracy. Into the ranks of the Andred's army went Alexander. Into the battle went the people's singer... His sword gleaming like a morning star. His sword shining for freedom. On the cha, young Alexander fought the oppressors. On the banks of the Danube, he still was marching. At Buda, his saber still flashed in the sun. But the ranks stood silent at Segesvar. The ranks stood silent and dumb. Baturfi, cried the captain. Baturfi, echoed the corporals. And they waited, as children wait. But the ranks stood stricken and dumb. Dead was Alexander. Dead was the singer. I, 
the singer was dead. The lips pale, the heart still. The trumpeter of freedom, mute on the ground. See, the fire is dim, the stars fade, the dawn, newborn and blind, fingers the east. For you who are travelers in this morning, you who journey the highway to the future, look to the signs upon the road. Listen to the songs upon it. A wanderer passed here, young Alexander. Alexander Petersi. He came this way. The tale is NBC University of the Air has brought you Chapter 2 in the new historical series, We Came This Way. Next week, We Came This Way will present the story of Victor Hugo, The Great Exile. A handbook containing background information with suggestions for further reading is now in publication. We shall be happy to send you this valuable We Came This Way handbook, especially written for the current series. Send 25 cents to cover the cost of printing and mailing to We Came This Way, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. Tonight's script was written by Raphael Hayes and was directed by Homer Heck. The music was arranged by Joseph Galicchio and Emil Soderstrom and conducted by Mr. Galicchio. Members of the cast included Cleve Kirby as the Tanter, William Everett as the Dirty, Fred Sullivan as Boris Mercier, and Lorette Philbrandt as Julia. Others in the cast were Howard Hoffman and Tom Post. This series is presented each week as a public service feature of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations.